Hi, this is Allison Taylor with Pictures and Stories, and today I'm going to show you how you can use Adobe Bridge, which is a free software that's available from the Adobe Creative Cloud, to enter metadata, which is descriptive information, into your digital photos. Now, this metadata will travel with your photos whenever they are shared or copied or uploaded to a website if the website supports um, metadata. So first of all, this is what the bridge will look like after you've installed it onto your system and we'll open it up. And I want to show you first how you can customize the bridge workspace so that you get it looking exactly the way that is most useful for you. The first thing I've done is I have navigated to a folder that I want to add some metadata to. This is a folder that has some ancestor photos of mine. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to go into the properties and I'm going to change the background color of this screen. I like a lighter background, so I'm going to go up to Edit and Preferences. And I'm going to choose Interface. And I'm going to go and make it a lighter background just because that's what I like. There are other things that you can change here. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to make some other changes to my workspace and then I'm going to save the workspace so that I have my own custom workspace and can get it exactly the way I want it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm probably not going to be selling any of my images on Adobe Stock so I'm going to get rid of this window so that it doesn't show up every time. Now I have a preview window, I have some other windows which I will show you and if I click on a photo, I can see some windows over here and some metadata information that comes up over here on the right. So the first window that shows up is a file properties window. This has some basic information. Most of it is uh, has been captured automatically by my camera or my scanner. Um, tells me what the file type is, um, that type of thing. But I don't really need to look at this information all the time. So I am going to click on this arrow right here and close the file properties window so that it doesn't show all the time. What I'm going to do is open up this IPTC core window because that is going to have the most information on my metadata that I'm going to want to change so that this window will stay open all the time. Now, if I click on this again and open that window, you notice that I have a whole lot of different fields here. Um, I can scroll down and see even more. And a lot of these I probably am not going to use all the time. So I'm going to hide them from my window in my workspace. That doesn't mean that I'm getting rid of this information or if there's a photo that has information typed in here that it will delete it. It just means that it's going to hide it from my window, which will make it a little more convenient for me. So I'm going to go up to, there's a little tiny pull down window right here in the metadata tab. I'm going to pull down this menu and I am going to click on the preferences. This will bring up the file properties for these windows right here. Now this file properties window, I have this unchecked because I don't want it to show up every time. However, it will still be there if I, if I need it. So I'm going to close this one. I also have this IPTC legacy file clicked off because that has to do with older versions of things and I'm just not that concerned about it. So I'm also going to close that. The one I'm the most concerned with is this IPTC core, which has most of my user editable metadata in it. Now it's got all of these checked and I don't want to see all of these each time. So I'm going to start unchecking the fields that I don't really need to show up. Okay, I'm going to leave creator there because that's where I want to put my contact information, or at least my name, and I'm going to leave the email address there so that people, if they find my photo, they can contact me. Um, I'm going to unclick some more of these. Description is where I'm going to put my main caption and my main descriptive information for this photo, so I'm going to leave that checked. I'll probably also leave the keywords file there in case I want to add a few keywords. I also have some keywords uh, files over here that I can that I can add to. Um, I'm going to unclick some of these other ones. 
that I don't really need to see all the time. I'll probably leave the title because a lot of other metadata programs use that. Job identifier instructions. I'm going to leave credit line because often I will download um, photographs from historical databases and such where I need to give attribution in a book to that uh, the person who took that photo. So I'm going to leave that there so that I can see and easily see the person who might need credit for me to use that photo. Also the source just tells me where it came from and the copyright notice and copyright status. So I'm going to leave all those checked and click OK. So now as you can see this window is much smaller. But another cool thing I can do is I can go up to the pull down menu and I'm going to choose increase font size which is really great because now it makes it easier for me to read what I'm typing in there. So as you can see I have some information that's already typed into this photo, some metadata that I already put in here. If I want to change any of that I just click on the field. I can either click on the little pencil button right here or just anywhere on this field. And let's say I'm going to take my email address out of this field and I'm going to put it in the email field instead. So just my name is under creator and I'm going to click on here and I'm going to type in my email address. If I can spell it right. Okay. And um, let's see, is there anything else? I've already got some keywords and a title in there. I think that's probably all I want to add for now. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to click the little check mark down here, which turns green and it says apply when I mouse over it. I'm going to click on that and that will apply my metadata to that photo. Now another cool thing that I can do is I can click on a range of photos to add the same metadata to a whole group of photos. Let's say that for the rest of the photos in this folder I'm going to add my my creator and my uh, contact information to all of these all at once. So I can either I can hit uh, control um, A for all or I can just shift click to select a range of photos. And then I can come in here, I can put my name in there and email address if I want to. I'm going to hit apply. And now when I go into each individual photo, you can see that my contact, my name, is in each one of these photos. And if you already have information in there, it will not get rid of the rest of it. Um, you can see if I select all of these that the other fields have multiple values, which means that they're just different from one photo to the next. But this one, it's the same on every one. So you can add metadata to all of your photos without disturbing the metadata in the other fields that you've added for these photos. Now I just want to show you a couple of other things that you can do to kind of tweak the workspace to make it look the way you want it to. One thing I want to do is I'm going to make these thumbnails bigger. So I'm going to come down to the bottom and there's a little slider and I can just slide up until I can see the photos bigger. And that's probably, I probably want about four across and that's good. So I like the way that looks. I can see a little bit more. Um, I also have some other filtering boxes over here that uh, you can see there's some keywords here. Um, I've got a couple of keywords that I've entered um, and I can also search by those. So it, let's say if I just want to see all the photos that have Emma Knightley in them, I can click on that and it will only show the photos that have Emma Knightley. So if you ever open up a folder one time that you know has a lot of photos in it and only one or two photos or no photos show up, don't panic. It probably just means that maybe one of these keyword filters has been clicked on and so it's not showing the rest of your photos. If I click it off again, then it shows all of my photos. So there's some really great things that you can do with the bridge. You can also rename a bunch of photos. Let's say that I want to put these photos in a different order 
And of course, computers have a way of only being able to put things in alphanumeric order. So now that I've moved these photos around so that they are in a different, maybe I'm putting them in chronological order, say, or, or whatever order appeals to me, I can then rename these photos with a, a number so that they will stay in this order. So I'm going to select all of my photos. I'm going to go up to this Tools, and I'm going to click on Batch Rename. Now I don't want it to completely get rid of the, uh, the names that I've already put in here because maybe I've put some in my file names, I've maybe put some descriptive information like the name of the person in the photo or something else, and I want to keep that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to rename in same folder. I'm going to get rid of these ones that are in here. If I, just, I can get rid of one of these um, file name attributes by just clicking on the, the minus sign. And I'm going to start with the sequence number. So let's say I don't have too many files in this, so it's, um, too many photos, so I'm just going to choose three digits. I'm going to have it start with number one. And then, so this, it shows me what my current file name is, which is this kind of funky name. And my new file name is going to be 001. Now, I said I wanted to keep the original file name also. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus sign. And in this pull down menu right here, I am going to use current file name. So what this will do is it will put a sequence number in the front and then it will follow it by the original file name so that I don't lose that. And you've noticed here it's kind of mushed those together and that might be a little hard to read. So in between these two I'm going to add another field and I'm going to um, use a text box and I'm just going to put an underscore there just so that it breaks up this name a little bit. Um, so and then I'm going to click on rename and as you can see, it's now put this lovely little three-digit code at the beginning of my photos without actually changing the original file names. And this is really useful because that means that when I go back into Windows or I go out of the bridge, those photos will stay in the proper order that I want them to be in. Otherwise, they would just go back to regular alphanumeric order, even though I've carefully dragged them around to a different order in the bridge. The last thing I want to show you is how, now that I have my display in Bridge exactly the way I like it, I like these thumbnails the way they are, um, I've gotten rid of some, some uh, boxes that I really don't need, and I've made my metadata fields just exactly the way that I want them. I'm going to save this workspace so that I can come back to it next time without having to change anything. So I'm going to, this shows you a bunch of different workspaces here for different um, different purposes. There's one called Film Strip, which if you want to see a large preview, there's all kinds of different things that you can do here. Um, but the one the, the main one that I first changed is called Essentials, but I want to retain that as a different file space. So I'm going to click on this down arrow and I'm going to click on New Workspace and I'm going to call it Allison's workspace. Click Save and now I have my workspace that's called Allison's workspace and it will stay that way. It'll be there anytime I want to come back into the bridge. And if I click on any of these other ones I can use them but I can always come back and change it to the way that I want it. That's it. I hope this will be very useful for you to add metadata to your photos. And I really encourage you to do that because otherwise people who come across your photos in a genealogy website or uh, online somewhere won't know who these people are potentially. So if you put the metadata in there, then they will be able to be identified by those people who are downloading your, downloading your photos.